now we are going to start a very important uh, topic in maths and is used quite a lot heavily yeah so this is called as uh, modular arithmetic this is a special kind of arithmetic and this is also called as arithmetic of remainders this is arithmetic of remainders uh, I believe everyone understands what uh, remainder is uh, so obviously whenever if let's say you have a number a and you have a number b and you are trying to divide a by b then if you want to know the remainder this is what the remainder is now to play around with this these remainders in a very uh, easy fashion and to also understand the property certain special property of remainders this arithmetic comes in very very handy so we will try to understand one very important thing about uh, this thing which is mod operator okay if you take modulus of a random number x with m okay then whatever is your result that lies in a range so the result would line between 0 to m minus 1 it means that whatever your remainder would be if you divide a number by m that remainder would line between 0 to m minus 1 only okay it can remainder can never be negative it can never be greater than the number or even equal to the number itself okay cool so one important thing to uh, realize here again is that let's say the value of m is equal to 5 so I can say that no matter what my x is the value of remainder will line between 0 to 5 minus 1 which is 4 okay now think of it in this way that uh, there are certain numbers uh, I am going to just write them let's say I start with the number 0 so I am iterating on the different values of x so let's say my x is 0 then x is 1 then x is 2 then x is 3 then x is 4 and then let's say x is 5 6 7 8 9 and then 10 11 12 13 14 uh, what will be the value of uh, 0 mod 5 if you take 0 mod m and m is 5 what will be the value of 0 mod 5 it will be 0 right and what will be the value of 1 mod 5 2 mod 5 3 mod 5 4 mod 5 what will be the value of 5 mod 5 it will also be 0 6 mod 5 1 7 mod 5 2 8 mod 5 3 9 mod 5 4 10 mod 5 0 11 mod 5 so can you see that uh, there is a time period or repetition after m units okay after m units there is a repetition that is happening that is I can generalize it very easily that if there is a number okay let me call this number as alpha so if there is a number alpha that has a particular small that has a particular mod with m then a number which is alpha plus m will also be having the same modulus value if taken mod with m can i generalize this is everyone able to understand this so this is a very important thing to understand and this property that you are seeing over here that these numbers i can write more numbers which follow in this class okay similarly here i can have 17 then 22 and so on these numbers belong to one particular family okay and they have something in common between them now that something which is common in between them is that if i take modulus of any of this number with m then the remainder that i will get will be same okay so this kind of similarity is called as modular congruence modular congruence so i can say that all these numbers because they are having the same modulus value when taken mod with m they are having modular congruence with each other okay and uh, there is a mathematical symbol also which is used to represent it uh, value of minus 2 mod 5 uh, i think again i'll give you some examples and you will be able to get it from there when i speak about it so here if you take a look over uh, this particular thing this modular congruence co congruence thing is also denoted in this way that uh, like 2 7 12 17 they are in a particular modular congruence family so you say that 2 mod 5 is same as 7 mod 5 is same as 12 mod 5 
So you use this kind of symbol to show that hey, this 2, 7, 12 and all other numbers are having modular congruence with respect to m equals to 5. Okay. Cool. So this is one thing that we understood. Now we will try to understand some of the important uh, laws of mod. Okay. Now we have to remember those some of the important laws or equations whatever you say of mod we will try to remember those. So first thing is that let's say uh, there are two numbers a plus b and you are trying to take their modulus with m. Okay. Now you basically added two numbers and you are trying to take their modulus with m. So can somebody tell me that if I talk about the value of this expression what will be the range of it from where to where will it lie of course I am taking a mod with m so whatever will be the value that will line between 0 to not m 0 to m minus 1 so whatever will be the result it will be lying in between 0 to m minus 1 now can this thing be written as this because if you are used to writing a plus b into c using the distributive property of operators what is distributive property? You distribute an operator across the internal operands. Okay, so you get a into c plus b into c. This is the you you are allowed to write this because this operator is simply distributive. Can I say that this modulus is also distributive? Uh, is it simply distributive? I'm saying is it simply distributive? Do you have to do some additional handling after distribution or not? Okay, so. What I mean by that is, can you write this thing as simple as a mod m plus b mod m? If you use your common sense, you will yourself say that, hey, you cannot write it like this. Why? Because can you tell me what will be the range of this expression? I mean, from where to where it can lie? Again, you are taking mod with m. So its value will lie in between 0 to m minus 1. Can I also say that the value of this will again lie in between 0 to m minus 1 right I can say correct so can you tell me what would be the maximum value of this entire thing what will be the maximum value of these entire things which is you can see something plus something maximum value will come when this is also maximum m minus 1 and this is also maximum m minus 1 in that case you will get 2m minus 2 and minimum value will come when both of them are minimum 0 0 each okay so this expression will line between 0 to 2m minus 2 now this 2m minus 2 can very well be greater than equal to m isn't it this 2m minus 2 can very well be greater than equals to m so this is very very obvious that the range of values of this doesn't coincide with the range of values of this so it can simply not be written as this so what is done that to bring back these values okay because if you if let's say the value of this plus this became greater than equal to m to bring back it to m there is one final mod with m which is taken in the end okay so a plus b mod m is a mod m plus b mod m whole modulus m Okay, and this is something that we have to remember. We simply have to remember. Okay, now uh, there is a very important physical significance of this. This is not a mere mathematical equation. This speaks a very versatile thing. Okay, and we have to understand what is it that it speaks. Uh, we just do it to store in integer range. I mean, no, it's not just that. That is one purpose that you take mod so that if a number overflows, you cycle it back to something smaller but that is not the everything okay that is a very small thing so if you take a look off look at this first you took a sum and then you performed remainder so this is this left hand side is remainder of sum left hand side that you see is remainder of certain sum okay look at right hand side and for a moment just don't look at this don't look at this for a while just look at this thing this plus this this is sum of remainders so can i write this right hand side as sum of remainders so left hand side was remainder of sum and right hand side 
is sum of remainders and because of a problem that we just got to know we said that not exactly sum of remainders but sum of remainders mod m. So here remainder of sum remainder of sum is being related to sum of remainders. Remainder of sum is sum of remainders modulus m. Okay. Think of this equation like that. Okay. Okay. Now let us talk about uh, other operators. Let's say uh, a minus b modulus m. So again, can it be written as a mod m minus b mod m? Okay. So think of it like this that whatever result you get from here, that result would lie in between 0 to 2m minus 2, right? Now, what would happen is, think of it like this, that if you had a value of expression over here, that was let's say something which lied in between, uh, which lied in between m to 2m minus 2, okay? Because for the values which are in between 0 to m minus 1, its modulus would exactly have been equal to that number, right? If you had something in between m to 2m minus 2, and then if you take a modulus with m, you would have got a value like 1, okay? You would definitely have got a value like 1. Now, just imagine, if you take modulus of a with m, okay, if you take modulus of a with m, what are the range of values that you can get? This is that range. If you take modulus of b with m, what are the range of values that you can get? Th that is from 0 to m minus 1. Then you do one thing on your own. Uh, it is an easy exercise that you can carry out. Think that what combinations of values of a mod m and what combinations of values of b mod m can give you answers in this range. One such combination could be when this thing is 1, this thing is m minus 1 or this thing is 2, this thing is m minus 2. Okay. And then what you do, you try substituting those things over here, okay. You will end up seeing that for all of those, for all of those what is happening, that value that what you are getting from here is again 1, okay. And from here what you are getting is again something which is 1 or greater than 1, okay. But it will not be greater than 2. Okay, now if you are getting something which is uh, greater than or equal to 1 but smaller than 2 and if you are taking the mod of that thing will 2, what will happen? What will essentially happen? It will happen that it will come back to a value that is, let's say you had an m plus 1, it will come back to 1. If you had m plus 2, it would come back to 2 and so on. Okay, so this is a little uh, observation based also from that. So try doing that once. Just I repeat it again, take certain combination of values of this and this which will give you something that lies in between m to 2m minus 2. I gave you one combination 1, m minus 1, 2, m minus 2. Similarly for a value like 2m minus 1, you can think of it like that this returned you m minus 1 and uh, sorry 2m minus 3. This returned you m minus 1 and this returned you m minus 2. Try substituting them over here, see what happens, okay. and then try substituting them here and then see what happens. Whatever value you get, I mean the way it recycles it back to something in between 0 to m minus 1, same thing would happen over there also, okay. So from that pattern you can uh, deduce this thing, okay. Cool. Now uh, the same thing, can I extend this thing over here? Can I write that a minus b modulus m is a mod m minus b mod m, is this true? I cannot write this, you can take some examples, uh, you can take certain examples over here. But before that tell me one thing, the way I commented that the range of this thing will lie in between 0 to 2m minus 2, can somebody tell me the range of this expression a mod m minus b mod m from where to where will it lie? Will it again lie in between 0 to that thing? Uh, yes. How many of you realize that the value of this expression which is a mod m minus b mod m, it can be negative also? Can it be negative or not? It can be negative, right? Because there is a minus operation that is happening. So the range of this will line between 0 to m minus 1. Again the range of this will line between 0 to m minus 1. Now the minimum value will occur if this thing is minimum which is 0. And if this thing is maximum, which is m minus 1, 
So in that case, the result will be minus of m minus 1. And the maximum value will occur when this is maximum and this is minimum. So the maximum value will be m minus 1. Now this thing can very well be negative. This thing can be negative. So what to do in such kind of situation? When you get a negative result, what to do? Can somebody just try to tell? See, one thing that you should understand is that the value of this expression will never overcross m minus 1. It can be negative, but it will never overcross. So what should be done over here? Yeah. So if the result that you are getting, see, one way is that you take a mod. Okay. But I will tell you in certain programming languages, the implementation is a bit faulty because at times when let's say this is uh, this complete value is negative and you are taking minus 4 mod 7. I have seen in certain programming languages it behaves in one way, in certain programming languages it, it behaves in the other way. So this is not that safe to do. The safest thing is that whenever you are seeing that the result of this expression is negative, simply add to that result m. Okay, And then you will definitely become positive because if let's say the value of this particular expression was something like uh, uh, was something like let's say minus 1 okay then you would have added m to minus 1 and you would have become m minus 1. Let us take an example let's say your a is 10 and b is 4 and m is 7. So what will be the value of 10 minus 4 mod 7? It will be 6 mod 7 which is 6 okay. Now if you try to apply just this much of thing on this you will get 10 mod 7 minus 4 mod 7. What will be the value of this thing? What will be 10 mod 7 minus 4 mod 7? It will be minus 1, right? Now, as I said, that whenever you are seeing that the value is negative, simply add the number with which you have taken mod. And then you will get back to this thing. So be very, very uh, stringent with this. I would say that uh, how add working okay again I would say that this is the proof is very very observation based okay you can uh, take certain examples like I said for that case you can take certain combinations of a and b where you end up getting negative values like you can take where your a mod m gave 0 b mod m gave 1 or a mod m gave uh, 1 b mod m gave 3 something like that. Okay, and then you can see that whatever values you are getting from there and whatever you are getting from here, they are rotating back to the same value of m. Okay, so it's kind of observation based, but good to remember it. Okay, so just remember this thing because most of the time this will come in very, very handy. And as I said, the first thing, uh, one thing that some of you said that simply take the mod of this number with m, that is not a great idea. Rather than that, prefer performing a plus of m to the result if it is negative. Now the same thing, uh, if I talk about a multiply b mod m, this can be written as a mod m into b mod m and again assuming that for now you have a and b as positive values only, then the modulus value that you will get, I mean uh, even if let's say you don't have them as positive, then this thing will be positive, this thing will be positive, positive or zero. So this product will always be greater than equals to zero. But sometimes it can overtake this m. So again, you perform a mod m over here. So for this plus, minus and into, you can distribute uh, this modulus operator in this particular way. For addition and multiplication, just take a last mod with m to recycle back to the range which is from 0 to m minus 1 but for this case uh, prefer adding m to your answer okay now talk let's talk about another operator like uh, a upon b mod m can this modulus be distributed upon a and b if there is a divide operator between them so the answer is no you cannot do that so how do we solve these problems so there is a totally different kind of approach for it which is called as inverse modulo so today i will not be going into details of that okay we will be covering that later okay uh, again there is a law over there okay uh, which works where you you are easily able to find the value of a upon b modem but for now you must remember one thing that this modulo operator cannot be distributed easily over division okay it is just applicable for addition 
subtraction and multiplication